So if we take a bunch of cells and we put them in a petri dish in liquid, and we allow the cells to settle onto the surface of this dish, you can take real-time cinematography and watch the cells move around in a random fashion. On the other hand, if you take a solution of fibronectin and dip a paintbrush into it and paint a track along the surface in this petri dish, the track can actually direct the cells to migrate along the track, which is what I've just shown here. This is useful because during development, an extracellular matrix forms along sheets of tissue, and newly differentiated cells can move along this track from wherever they originated to where they have to be before they can differentiate any further. This is very important, obviously, during the formation of an embryo and the development of fetal tissues and so on. Here's another example. Oh, I should have caught that. Another example of extracellular matrix guidance of cell movements. This one occurs in the blood. Neutrophils are white blood cells that migrate between the endothelial cells lining blood vessels to move towards a wound or an infection site. These neutrophils, which have specific oligosaccharides in their glycoproteins on their surfaces, recognize receptors called lectins. If you remember, lectins are proteins that recognize and bind to specific sugar residues. The lectins on the endothelial cells can bind to the sugars on the neutrophil surface, attaching the neutrophil to the endothelial cell, which then is able to migrate along the endothelial cell, and eventually, after several other events, can then insert themselves and squeeze themselves between endothelial cells, leaving the blood vessel and going to the site of infection where they can phagocytose or endocytose debris, bacteria, whatever they have to remove from the wound site or site of infection. Again, it's a kind of migration. It involves the neutrophils moving along the basal lamina or ECM of endothelial cells. Let's take another look at a role of RGD motifs in blood coagulation. What you see in the picture are platelets. During blood clotting, they are aggregated by molecules of fibrinogen or fibrin, and they form a meshwork of structure along with the fibrin itself, which forms a meshwork of fibrous molecules to produce a clot, essentially a blockage of blood flow through the vessel. So if you, if you cut yourself, you obviously won't bleed all over the floor. Within a few minutes, the blood clots at the wound. Part of that clotting is the aggregation of platelets. It turns out that the fibrin or fibrinogen, either one, has RGD motifs which can bind to integrins on the platelet surface, forming this aggregate that you see in the picture. Now we know that this is what's going on because we can make synthetic RGD tripeptides. Now that's just a three amino acid polypeptide, a tripeptide, uh, illustrated here as a crescent moon. And if you mix those synthetic tripeptides with platelets, what will happen is that the tripeptides will recognize and bind to the integrin. And the result is that these platelets are blocked from attaching to one another. They can no longer attach to the fibrin molecules or fibrinogen molecules, which you can see floating around in the blood here, unattached to the platelet. So these synthetic RGD tripeptides block platelet aggregation by binding to the integrin on the platelets and displacing or preventing fibrin from doing so. So that's, that's an experiment that we did, not me, but the, the grand we, did to show that the RGD motif is actually responsible for platelet recognition and, ag and aggregation. A last word about integrins. They are transmembrane proteins that can recognize fibronectin or collagen and even several other molecules, but the cytosolic side has other functions. Shown here is that the cytosolic end of the integrin is articulated with bits of cytoskeleton. Here are some actin molecules and other components of the cytoskeleton attached to the integrin and some signal molecules that can respond when either collagen or fibronectin or other molecules bind to integrin outside the cell. And the response is to transmit information to the nucleus, uh, which then turns genes on or off, getting the cells to behave in certain ways. And this is obviously very important during embryogenesis, when cells have to interact, begin to move, begin to produce new materials, so integrin functions not only to help build the ECM in the first place, but while building the ECM, the integrins allow a cell to respond appropriately during development and in other events.